السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم مائی برادرز اینڈ سسٹرز ہو ڈیزروز ٹو ہیو عید اٹس اونلی دوز ہو ٹک دا منتھ آف رمضان سیریسلی اللہ سیز ولی تک مل العدت ولی تکبر اللہ علام ہدا کم ولا کم تشکرون ان اوڈر دیٹ یو کمپلیٹ دی انٹائر پیریڈ اللہ ہیز سیٹ ڈاؤن آل دیز رولز ریگولیشن ایٹسیٹرا اللہ سیز to complete the entire duration that's the month from the sighting of the moon to the sighting of the moon and to declare the greatness of Allah because of what he has guided you to and so that you can be thankful so Allah gives you the day of Eid because he's guided you he guided you to what to the rules and regulations governing what should be done in the month of Ramadan if you have followed them you deserve a day of Eid if you have fasted in a way that Allah has asked you to do so. I mean, you might have, for example, women who may not have fasted because of their monthly cycles or because of postnatal or maybe because they were breastfeeding or maybe because they were pregnant. You might have men who might not have been well or they may have been traveling. So if you've had the excuse, Alhamdulillah, that's good. But remember my brothers and sisters, If you did not respect the month of Ramadan, you don't deserve a day of Eid. People come up on the day of Eid and you know what they do? They sin and transgress against Allah thinking that that's the day of sinning. But those are the people who've sinned throughout Ramadan and sometimes they put aside one or two sins. Month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us steadfast and help us to improve. So... During this month, we are supposed to have watched our tongues, watched our temper, not sworn, not lied or deceived, not gossip, not slander, not backbite, not abuse. We're supposed to have solved problems, tried to solve problems. We're supposed to have uh, prayed a lot, salah. We're supposed to have fasted every day according to what Allah has instructed us. We're supposed to have uh, given our charities to the best of our abilities. We're supposed to have declared the greatness of Allah and praise Him every morning and evening. We're supposed to have read a lot of Qur'an and our lives should have changed. Now you deserve a day of Eid. Definitely. Allah says, don't fast on that day. It's prohibited. And you know what? You must eat something before you go to Salah. And please make sure that you have given your Sadaqatul Fitr. Make sure that you give it before you go out for Salat al-Eid. Now, there are many charities collecting Sadaqatul Fitr. Make sure you give it to a charity that is reliable, that's going to give it out for you at the right time, inshallah. So you may want to give it from now to the charity and the charity would then give it on the day, inshallah al-Aziz. Now, that is in order for the poor to also enjoy the day of Eid, to be able to have something to eat, a bit of food and so on. That's why it's better to give them food that they're going to eat. If it's food they're not going to eat, mm, it's not a good idea. But food that they're going to eat. And sometimes you may also give them uh, the money to buy that food. You know, the scholars have differed in opinion as to exactly what. But if we're going to give them the grain nowadays, in some countries they throw it away. Some countries they resell it and so on because they no longer use that. You know, they no longer... Uh, eat that. They prefer burgers and pizzas and so on. And subhanAllah, you might want to just give them the money. It's permissible from a permissibility perspective. So whatever you do, make sure you've given the fitra or the amount for sadaqatul fitr, as it were. And subhanAllah, make sure you don't mess up the reward that you've attained throughout the month of Ramadan. When you dressed appropriately, it doesn't mean here's the day of Eid, I remove my appropriate dress. I covered up so nicely. In Islam, clothing is there to cover. In other cultures, sometimes clothing is there to reveal. Ask yourself, am I clothing in order to cover? Or am I clothing in order to show and reveal? So Islam teaches you to do the first. And sometimes other cultures teach you to do the other. We are taught to cover. And Allah says, When Ramadan ends, don't go back to the old you that was before Ramadan, but rather maintain that goodness and that balance and understand I need to improve myself. I must do something better than I did before Ramadan 
after Ramadan. I need to make some improvements. And in that way, I will be able to achieve closeness to Allah. Learn, my brothers and sisters, about the Quran and the Sunnah. Because if you don't learn about the Quran and its message, what was the point of your whole life? Imagine spending a lifetime and you don't even know the main book that that existed during your time on earth. And then you're going to go back to Allah when you are asked, did messengers not read these verses for you? Did people not read these verses? And you don't want to say, yeah, they read them. I never understood them. I didn't know, you know. And Allah will say, but we had it all over. You had plaques in your houses where you put them up on the walls and you read them and you still didn't adhere to them. You didn't even know what they meant. And this is why when we're putting up plaques in our home, some of the scholars say, don't put up a verse of the Quran unless you're going to read that, unless you're going to know its meaning and try to put it into practice and talk to others about it. Then you can put it up on the wall. But if it's just for decoration, the Quran was never revealed in order to decorate. It's not just a decoration. Yes, its writing may be so beautiful sometimes because of uh, calligraphy. And a lot of you might be, uh, you know, calligraphists by or calligraphers by hobby or whatever. But that doesn't mean you can just do something for decoration alone. You need to read it at least a few times. You need to make sure you look at it. Let it move you. Let it touch you. Talk to others about it. Say, you see that? What does it say? It says, for example, in Allah Allah is with those who bear patience. So my brothers and sisters, let's bear patience. Talk to each other about it. Then you have fulfilled its right. So Allah will grant you a day of happiness and joy when you yourself have sacrificed for the sake of Allah. What's the joy without a sacrifice in anything in life? In the same way, when you've led your entire life sacrificing for Allah, Allah will give you the biggest of all Eids. When you meet with Allah, subhanAllah. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, A person who's fasting has two times when they will be very happy. The first happiness is when they are breaking the fast. So you break the fast on two occasions. One is when the day ends. And secondly, when the season ends, end of Ramadan. So you have happy, a happy time every iftar and a happy time on the day of Eid. That's in the fitrihi. And the second part is in the liqa'i rabbihi. The happiness and the joy, the greater joy when he meets his Lord or she meets her Lord. Subhanallah, when you go back to Allah and he's seen the sacrifice that you made to obey him, to please him. Wallahi, you will have such a beautiful day because Allah is the most kind, the most generous. He's the one who recompenses you with so much of goodness when you've done just a little bit. So remember these beautiful words and inshallah, I pray that this Eid, we can have the Eid with a difference. And if you've been disobeying Allah through Ramadan, just stop it. Just cut it out. These last 10 nights are much more sacred in the sense that it's nearing the end. Laylatul Qadr is one of these nights. Subhanallah. So we must make sure that we do uh, take these nights seriously. It's not yet finished. Like we say when the score of a football match is still 0-0 or 1-1, we can say there is a few hours, a few minutes remaining, you can still score a goal. So we would tell you the same right now. A few days remaining, you can still score your goal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those who can uh, have fasted Ramadan in the proper way and have stood at night in Taraweeh in a proper way and have obeyed Allah and abstained from his prohibitions in a proper way so that we achieve forgiveness and so that we deserve the Eid. May Allah bless you all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.